you guys. I'm going to let those of you that are going to be joining today give you a couple minutes to log on. Because um, sometimes I'm starting too soon and then people are missing part of the message. Hopefully everybody's having a great week. I'm getting excited for Valentine's Day because it's a huge day when people get engaged. Kind of cliche. I don't care. Uh, a lot of people get engaged on Valentine's Day. I think it's cute. And um, so super excited for that. So I'm going to wear my Valentine's Day colors for the rest of the month each week. So hopefully it doesn't annoy you when I have hearts next week and kisses the next week. Oh, and hopefully you grabbed your wine. Um, this... <laughs> My husband poured this glass of wine. This is like basically an entire bottle of wine in a glass, but it's okay. Hopefully I'm not gonna drink it all during this entire segment. Um, so, um, today we are going to be talking about the top 10 areas where we feel um, a client should focus their wedding budget. Now, a lot of my current clients watch this, so if you are not doing this, um, don't feel bad. Or if you're spending money in an area that I did not mention, don't feel bad about that either. Um, this is just kind of a really, you know, general overview. And I'm kind of considering this like, in a perfect world, you know, everyone has a budget, but you're able to really pick and choose where you spend your money. Because obviously if someone came to us with no budget, we would focus on everything, every area we would do something. Um, but that's not always the case. So we do feel throughout the planning process that there are areas that a client um, should definitely allocate their money. And we're going to tell you why. Um, again, this is our opinion so take that for what it's worth but um, if you as always have any questions or comments that you want me to address during this please feel free to submit them I am happy to do that um, <clears throat> I'm gonna give another minute or so and then we will get started um, just moving forward so people know I've had some people email me and text me and DM me and say that they've missed um, messages that they were really interested in and so moving forward I will be posting every single one afterwards just in case you didn't get a chance to watch it on YouTube and that way you're able to go back and review it if for some reason you can't log on live um, I got like a little studio setup so I have a lot more flexibility with the time that I do this versus working with natural light so I can kind of flip-flop times around um, depending on what works best for people so today we're driving trying five o'clock mountain which four o'clock pacific seven o'clock eastern the seven o'clock eastern people might already well be on their way on wind down Wednesday but that'll be more fun so east coasters I see some of you definitely submit some of your questions. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to get started. Um, so top 10 areas we feel like someone should allocate their wedding budget. First one, 100% is going to be a wedding planner. Um, I think it is obviously so important. I've mentioned it in other Instagram lives, how important it is to have a planner at the beginning of the process for so many reasons, which I've talked about in the past, so I won't waste this on that. I can always do another one um, at the time, um, another time. But um, I think that the very first move for anyone should be to hire a good, experienced, knowledgeable, strong planner. Um, and I've gone over those numbers before. It really depends on what market you are in um, and kind of your experience level. But I'd say for any type of client, you could expect to spend anywhere from, you know, low end 5000 to, I mean, it could go up to 80000 I know planners that charge that much. So huge range. But um, I'd say at the minimum, you should be allocating 7500 to 15000 
towards a wedding planner. That's number one. Um, and if you don't have a wedding planner or you can't afford a wedding planner, we certainly understand. Just take all the other nine points for what it's worth when you are allocating your budget if for some reason you feel that a planner is not in your budget. Um, <clears throat> second area. So this is kind of a tricky one. Um, and it's gonna be a tire. Now what I mean is this. If a client comes to me with a certain budget and tells me they spent $15,000 on their dress and it is, you know, 10% of their budget, I may tell them that that's not necessarily what I would have recommended if I was doing their budget for them to spend. Um, we have definitely had clients do this and it's great if you can afford that. I think it's amazing. But when I say focus on attire, I mean like the big picture. Every, like what the bride is wearing, what, the shoes, the jewelry, the bracelet, the necklace, the hairpiece, um, of course the dress, um, what the groom's wearing, his shoes, his belt, you know, his outfit, how that coordinates with you, how that coordinates with your bridal party, with your, you know, flower girl, ring bear, and all of that. So I'm not necessarily suggesting that you take a huge chunk of money and go buy a super expensive dress that you're most likely gonna only wear once, hopefully. Um, what I'm really saying more is to focus on just the fashion in general and like all the little details that go into it. So don't just focus on the dress, focus on all of the other pieces too um, that kind of fit the whole entire picture as well as what the groom is wearing also. I think that's so important. So fashion and kind of putting thoughtfulness into that. I've seen some amazing dresses this year that have not been expensive, but have been extremely different or, um, you know, a white jumpsuit. Like I literally have a bride that's wearing a white leather jumpsuit, which is amazing. And the pictures are going to be so cool. And um, so when you're thinking about allocating money towards fashion, just think about all the little details that go with the suit, with the tux, with the dress, um, so that when you are getting your photos back, you know, it's all the little details too that complement, um, of course, the suit, tux, or dress. Um, the third thing is kind of a funny subject matter because I did an Instagram live and um, I spoke about budgets, of course, and I said that when we're putting budgets together and we have to cut somewhere, that the first thing we cut is a videographer. Now, that being said, I also said that it was my biggest regret at my own wedding that I did not have a videographer. <laughs> so I know I'm talking out like, two ends um so my i guess my conclusion is get a videographer it doesn't have to be a super expensive one there's a lot of amazing videographers out there and there's huge you know price ranges there's new people that come into the industry that are like super talented and they're willing to shoot weddings or work with planners on pricing for people um, just to, you know, get, get in with the planner, get in with the venue, build their portfolio. Those are some of my favorite vendors to work with because they aren't really established yet, just as creative, if not more than some others, just as talented, um, you know, super hungry, you know, ha don't necessarily have a huge ego yet. I love working with people like that um, because I feel like they really, really over deliver for our clients. Um, so on that note, I would say as a planner that's done this for 17 years, my biggest regret was not having a videographer. So I am trying to teach you not to do that and not have that regret. So I definitely think you need to figure out a way to allocate money to video. Um, then I would say, of course, photography is so important. And again, the same thing. Um, real tons of photographers oh my gosh in Colorado we have so many photographers because it's such a beautiful state and everyone is moving here um, and we're trying to like lie about our weather and say that we like live under a snow cap all the time because we want people to stop moving here but um, 
No, it's actually really good for our business, so it's okay. Keep up, keep on coming to Colorado. But um, when it comes to photography, it's so important, and you've probably heard this before, maybe you haven't, but at the end of the day, literally when the flowers are dead, the decor is taken down, everybody's gone home, a couple months later, you know, people are moving on to something else and not talking about your wedding. Uh, the photos are all you have left, like forever. So it's so important. And again, I'm not necessarily suggesting that you have to put a ton of money towards photography. Although if you do have it, I think that that's a great area to, you know, get a really experienced photographer. And I've said this in the past, um, a great way to get a really good photographer for, for potentially less money would be to, um, get a very talented photographer that has a second shooter. I spoke about this last week, definitely do an engagement session, forego the album. Um, you can make your own album somewhere else. So just spend more money on getting a really great person with really good talent there that can take the images, give them to you, and then you can go do whatever you want with them. But I do think at the end of the day, months and years later, the photographer is so important. I have so many clients even though I'm talking them into it now, that say, um, nobody watches the video. I'm never gonna watch the video, or I'm gonna watch it once. And it's not necessarily true, especially like in this day and age. I mean, you're not having to pop that thing into a VCR. Like it is so easy to get online, watch the video on Instagram, watch it on Facebook, send it digitally. I really feel like people will watch it multiple times um, and forever. I mean, hello YouTube. Um, so I do not agree with that comment that you won't ever watch it again. I think you will, especially if let's say like <clears throat> your grandmother is there. Like this is a huge reason I regret not having a videographer. My 97 year old grandma is still alive and she made it to my wedding. And I would have loved to have looked back on that, you know, someday when she's not here anymore and shown my kids and then they could show their kids. And I think it's just so cool to see how like weddings have evolved, fashions evolved, trends and details and how much things have changed. And um, I just think that that is not true and you will watch your video again, assuming it's a really good video and you will look at your pictures again. So I do think that it is important to put your money into those areas. Um, um, so my next thing is something that I love. It's very important to me. And as a planner that takes a lot of pride in um, my work and, you know, kind of treating it almost like art and wanting to walk away with like a really beautiful, thoughtful, you know, kind of fresh um, wedding that I've helped design and produce with multiple other amazing, talented people that I bring in to bring the vision to life. I think that decor and installations are so important if you can swing it. There are actually planners that have been around for a really long time that are getting away from the planning and going in specifically to like design and decor installations. So what I mean is like when you want to do some really amazing thing over the dance floor or you want some really over the top band backdrop or you want to cover the entire ceiling and greenery with chandeliers, whatever it is. Um, an installation is more um, like, a, like if you can envision like building a set, um, more of a prop versus just like um, a lounge furniture or something like that. So we are so into the installation thing um, when our clients can afford it and I'd say from a decor perspective that I'm focusing more on really creative things that are gonna wow your guests. So I'm not saying that flowers aren't important because to us and to most planners, um, everything's important. 
but we also know that a lot of times we're working within budgets and we have to kind of figure out you know where we want to put the importance um so i tend to tell my clients that i feel like five really key components at an event are what you should focus on and so basically what i mean is um a real so if you have a band like do a really amazing band backdrop or um, do a really amazing installation over the dance floor I try to you know focus on areas where people are gonna spend the most time so bars um, dancing of course looking at a band I always love if there's a huge head table that's such a focus because everybody's looking at the bride and groom all night so I love you know putting a lot of focus in, into the head table that a lot of pictures are gonna be taken there um, super into obviously like really cool elements at a ceremony so I don't tend to encourage my clients to do like an arch and then you know some stuff on the ground and then some stuff down the chairs and then pedals down the aisle and stuff you know it's just too much sometimes and a lot of people can't afford to do all that and the ceremony is very important but it is one of the shortest periods of time that people are spending at your wedding so I really tried to focus on like five wow factors so the second the you know guests arrive to your wedding till the end what are the five things that they're gonna be like oh my gosh that is so cool like I love that and go back and talk about it um I am a huge fan of flowers and really cool interesting centerpieces however if I had to choose between my clients spending a lot of money on floral or money on really cool custom elements like I'm talking about I definitely would go for the custom elements because I've done some really over the top stuff and then I've done some more simple stuff and there you know our goal is always to have our clients and the guests walk away and say it was the best wedding they ever went to regardless however I do think if you were to ask guests after the wedding things that they remembered even though you spent three thousand dollars on this floral centerpiece I think sometimes people walk away and remember more that you did this like amazing dessert station and it you know was on a conveyor belt and went around in a circle and you could just like grab it off those types of things because we've all been to really great weddings most people have been guests at multiple weddings have seen so many different things and I just feel like it's almost harder to wow and impress guests these days so trying to do you know kind of more thoughtful decor um type things is something we think is so important um okay so my next one is good alcohol uh food is not on my list i'm not really a food person i appreciate people who are i definitely appreciate good food um but i feel like people walk away more remembering if the food was horrible than if it was really amazing that's just my personal opinion i'm not saying food's not important i'm just saying i think people will walk away and talk more about serving cheap wine out of a box or vodka in a plastic bottle and and cheap beer and kind of all that than they would really bad food and if you serve really good alcohol and your food sucks then they're not going to remember anyway <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Um, I just think that it should be a focus, that wine is important, even if you just focus on like a few key things. Like wine definitely I think is important because bad wine is horrible. You almost can get away with bad liquor before bad wine because bad liquor, at least you mix it with stuff and you can make, make it taste different ways. Um, but wine I think is so important. And then like different you know think about so huge vodka drinkers these days whiskey drinkers think about you know the different alcohols tequila of course and maybe focus on upgrading those if you can't necessarily afford to have like a super duper premium bar but I feel like when guests go to a wedding 
and they see expensive wine, expensive liquor, you know, nice beer, it almost, and nice champagne, um, I feel like they get more excited. I know I would. Um, and um, so I think that upgrading your bar, if you can, is so important, or at least focusing on a cue a few key pieces of that. Um, speaking of key, I got a question I'll answer um, asking me what this key is around my neck. So just a little side, little side chat. Um, so this key is from a company called The Giving Key and you can buy it from The Giving Key website or we have a store in Colorado. It's only in Colorado, it's called In Him. And on this key is a word. And so you, when you pick out your key, you pick out your word that you want on your key. And it kind of pertains to like what you want to feel or maybe something that you want to attract or, um, you know, something like that. So my word is fearless. Um, they have all kinds of words. And um, I got one of these a while ago and the whole concept of it is to wear your key and then someday you might meet someone that you feel needs to be fearless. And so what you do is you actually give it to them. So you give your key away and then they wear it and then hopefully, you know, kind of start to stir that up in themselves and then when they feel like they meet someone, they give that key away. So this is actually my second one. I bought one I had not worn it yet and I met a middle schooler who I adore that was going through a rough time and I just felt like she needed it more than I do so I gave it to her and then I went and um, I got this for Christmas so this is my word so anyway thanks for asking um, and then my favorite wine oh gosh so I'm a wine snob like totally self-proclaimed um, but I will tell you that if I could only pick one Chardonnay and one red to drink like for the rest of my life and I'll take into consideration this is like taking a price point into consideration Sonoma Coutre or Chardonnay all the way and then for red I've been trying a whole bunch of new ones lately we got a total beverage here, which is so dangerous because it's literally like a mile from my house and everything is so cheap. But there's a guy there that's been having me try new stuff and get me to branch out. So my new favorite red, and these are like $25 a bottle, 20 to $25 a bottle type things. Um, it's a wine, it's a cab, it's called The Calling. It is amazing. You definitely should try it. So Sonoma Couture and The Calling. Thanks for asking. Um, okay. So my next category that I think is so important to focus on are rentals. Um, and what I mean by that is chairs, linens, and then if you can afford it, tabletop. So flatware, glassware, chargers, um, you know, all those little details. I'll tell you a funny story. So I was at a rental company um, a couple weeks ago with a client the groom and the mom and we were mocking up the table with the floral and I before they came in I'd already preset kind of what I thought they should do and because I just find that's easier and then it's you know they can kind of say like oh love it hate it you know whatever so um, they were looking at all this stuff and kind of like oh gosh how much is this gonna cost how much is this gonna cost and so I was like, oh, you know, it's okay. Well, we don't need to do the flatware if you don't want to. Your venue provides it. We definitely should do the charger. You're doing a sit down dinner. We definitely need to do the linen. So I was kind of walking them through it. So I pulled the flatware away and I went and grabbed just silver flatware. It was like gold flatware with beautiful handles. And um, I put it away and then I put the silver flatware with everything and the mom was like, oh, oh my god we need the gold flatware so I brought it back and put it back and so I think people do start to recognize how much little things can really make a difference just in the overall big picture is the guest gonna walk away and the next day be like oh my god I ate off a gold fork probably not 
but they are going to be like, oh my gosh, I just went to the most amazing wedding last night. It was so beautiful. I mean, the tables, the details. So they may not remember like exactly the specifics, but just how everything looks together, I think is so important. And I 99.9% .9 of the time rent chairs. Nobody likes hotel chairs or chair covers for that matter. Um, and when people say like, oh, I don't really care about the chairs. And then I look at their wedding photos and they spent all this money on the centerpieces and floral and all you see are those freaking ugly chairs. I hate that so much. And it's like, yes, the chairs are important. The linens are important. You don't have to go, you know, get a $150 linen, although those are really nice. I mean, if you saw one, you'd be like, I have to have this linen. And there's ways to like incorporate that stuff without having to do the whole thing for the wedding. Like you could do those gorgeous linens at cocktail hour. So then you need less of them and simpler linens at dinner and, you know, kind of like figure out a way to make it all work. But polyester linens, please, no polyester linens, no linens that don't touch the floor. I mean, it's like you might as well be at a football banquet with your 12 year old. I, it, I, and I have had my brides come to me and go, oh, my maid of honor said like, no one notices the linens. And I'm like, yes, they do. And if they don't, then they're at least noticing that the ones that are there are ugly. So even if you just go get like silk dupioni or, you know, something that's not expensive, it's so important. So please, like in the, in the hierarchy of if I had to rank, chairs number one because if you have ugly linens the chairs can hide them linens number two and then i would build from there if you're doing a sit down dinner you definitely need a charger if you're doing a buffet i like it for the look but i have seen people literally take the charger to the buffet and they like literally had this big huge thing and i was like oh my god they're eating off the chargers and they're so huge so it's got these big piles of food so you know definitely something to think about but chargers i think are so important then i would move into glassware and then if i had to pick i guess flatware would be last but when you see it all together you're gonna want it all so i definitely think it's important i there are some venues now that are providing nicer chairs so you know at least if it's a crossback or a shivari fine i'll settle even though i you know we've all done those like eight million times um but i always have to remind myself it's new to you or it's new to the bride so you know um but i think it is so important to allocate money to that and if i had to go even further my next thing would be a cool dance floor okay enough on that um, okay, then I think this is my last one. No, no, it's not. Um, hang on. Um, okay, I never thought I'd say this, but my eighth one, my ninth one, I think I'm on number nine, um, would be a wedding cake. And you're gonna, you're probably like, oh my gosh, is she insane? Why would she say that? And I'm gonna tell you why. So many people come to us and say, no one eats the cake. Everyone hates the cake. I never ate the cake. No one cares about cake. And I kind of agree with you. Again, it's one of those things. If you have an amazing cake, they will remember it. If you have a really crappy cake, they're going to remember it. So either way, you know, they're going to remember it. But the reason I'm saying cake or even just dessert displays in general is this. Our most liked photo on Instagram, whenever we post, and we post all kinds of things, brides and grooms, details, decor, invitations, you know, you name it. Whenever we post like a really amazing cake, it's like our most liked photo. So to me, that tells me that you guys out there love looking at really cool cakes. So I'm, I'm saying more from a detail standpoint. Um, and, and you know, a lot of times now they're doing styrofoam cakes. So the cake isn't even real. 
and you definitely have to find out if they're doing that where to cut because I've had some clients try to cut through the styrofoam which is super hilarious not to them they're like so embarrassed but to me I'm like oh my god you're cutting the styrofoam so you if you do the styrofoam cake sometimes you can save money sometimes not because the decorating really is what is costing you um, but if you do the styrofoam cake then obviously they do sheet cakes in the back but I'm more saying that I feel like it's important from a detail perspective. Um, and so if you are gonna do it and you're gonna allocate, you know, a chunk of money to it, like make that thing amazing. Where people literally are like, oh my gosh, that's the most insane cake I've ever seen. I mean, we've hung cakes from swings. We've had like cakes hanging in the air. You can do so many cool things with them too, even the display. We've had cakes on glass tables with you know, 5,000 rose petals. We had a little rustic wedding years ago where we had this little wood table and it looked like a tree trunk and we carved the initials of the bride and groom in a little heart in the trunk, put a top on it and put the cake on it. And it was adorable and people loved it. So I do think, I think cakes are gonna come back. So if they're like super popular next year, I said it first. Um, but I know people were doing the cupcake thing for a while, the donut thing for a while. I'm actually not into any of that. I just like the look of it. Um, the dessert displays are still super popular. I do kind of feel like just dessert in general, you know, people are so like vegan and vegetarian and no gluten, no sugar, no dairy, no anything. And so it's really hard to even do dessert these days. Um, however, I do think it's an area that you could do something if you are going to spend money there do something really cool and like super over the shop or just skip it and spend the money somewhere else um, okay my last thing um, my last area is um, allocating money towards creative ideas so we have clients come to us all the time and it's like one of the very first things they say you're really known for creative ideas you do all these like super creative things you know i really want that and it's like okay calm down we will get there because we don't just like spew creative ideas we need to see like where this wedding is going to evolve you know because you don't necessarily know that and this idea that comes out of my mouth not might not work for your wedding or your venue or your style or your personality so we love when clients come to us and appreciate creative ideas because it's one of our most favorite things and we love kind of pushing ourselves to do things that other people haven't done i mean let's be honest everybody's already done it all but if i think of it myself versus looking it up on pinterest i at least feel you know better about myself um, so putting money towards creative ideas and I literally just booked a client that once they told me their budget which they had plenty to do whatever they wanted to do they said our number one goal is creative ideas like we want our wedding to be a spectacle where literally the guests turns every which way and there's something cool and interesting and different that they've never seen before so I kind of pulled some ideas from the vault and if any of my planner friends are on here or if anybody, anybody actually has a cool idea that you've seen or always wanted to see or always wanted to do, please feel free to throw it on here because I'd love to, to mention it. Um, so some of my things that we've done in the past or are doing in the future, um, I wrote a couple of them down just so I wouldn't forget. Um, so our beer burrows, so our beer donkeys, they're very important um, because they are very popular. <laughs> um, I literally had the idea to do this. Pretty sure it's been done a million times before, but for this particular client, wanted to do the beer burrows, proposed it to them, and then they loved it and wanted to do it at their welcome party. So you get the beer burrow or the beer donkeys and you bring them to the event and you dress them up and you put flowers on them and they have little packs and you put, you know, white claws and beers and all kinds of things and they walk around cocktail hour. They are so great. They never get old. However, we have done it, you know, a good amount of times. 
We're doing it again two more times this year, and I have to remind myself, great idea, we've done it a couple of times, it's still new to them and probably to their guests. So, you know, when we do certain ideas, we try to only do them like a couple times, and then we try to move on to something else creative because we don't want to be known for like the beer donkey weddings and like there's always donkeys at our weddings. There are usually, but they're they're called men. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> sorry. Hopefully there's mostly women watching this. Um, so the beer burrows have been very popular. Um, the the hard part was when we proposed the idea, then we actually had to go find them, and that you know gets a little tricky. But we did, and um, he's actually raised his prices quite a bit now because they're like professionals. So that was a fun idea, and that's like an eleven hundred dollar idea. So if you ever wanted to know how much beer donkeys cost, it's eleven hundred bucks plus the beer that goes in the little side satchel things. Um, Okay, so years ago, this wedding actually never happened, which is kind of sad, but we got through the save the date process and they had a really small guest count. They wanted super over the top save the dates. And I was like, oh my gosh, like what am I gonna do? How, you know, do I just do like really thick paper with tons of gold foil? I can't have butterflies fly out, like that's been totally done. And so we ended up doing pocket watches that were hand delivered in a wood box and they counted down to the wedding date, to the actual wedding. And that was amazing, but they were $75 a piece. But we only needed 50 of them, which I know that's probably, you know, that's three or $4,000, but people will spend that on invite, you know, over the top invitations or over the top save the dates all the time. I mean, people will spend 12, 15, 20,000 on invitations. So in the whole scheme of things, not, not totally crazy, um, but that was an amazing idea. I was so sad when the wedding didn't happen because I can't imagine like what we would have done for the wedding, but was glad to do something like that. Um, okay, the St. Bernard, uh, Phoebe is her name. You've probably seen her pictures on Facebook. Found her in my neighborhood, just had an idea one day that I wanted a whiskey toning St. Bernard at a winter wedding with snow falling, found her, booked her, paid her, she showed up, she was so popular, people loved her, I'm sure I will use her a couple of more times, I actually know I will because next January I have a client that wants to use her, so we'll keep keep her in business, um, but you know, I love using animals when it fits, um, and so don't be surprised if next year I have golden retriever puppies like running around just for cocktail hour, like not to give away, just for fun or something fun like that. I just love using animals. People love that. But Phoebe or St. Bernard, that, that was a fun idea. And she is now going for the bargain price of $1,000. So um, again, so see how these all these little things add up. So, you know, you have to allocate money towards this stuff if it's something that's important to you these creative ideas. Um, okay, this was a good one. So, and it's been done a couple of times because I've seen other people do it, although it never gets old and I think it's so cool. So cocktail hour by the pool, you know, a lot of people just would think, oh, let's float flowers in the pool. Let's float balls that light up in the pool. How about you get a water ballet group? So like during cocktail hour, you have girls doing the old school like water ballet with their little caps and their little suits and stuff. Um, that is a super fun idea, not cheap, a couple thousand dollars, but just kind of trying to encourage you and our clients to sort of think outside of, you know, what just seems obvious, like let's put some flowers in the pool or, you know, string some market lights over it. Like let's put someone in the pool and that's what we did. So that was super cool, um, water ballet group in the pool. Um, okay, so we did a wedding years ago at the Breakers and when the bride and groom walked in, when they were announced, um, Firework was playing by Katy Perry 
and the guests were like all excited and they came dancing in and before they knew it um, fireworks actually shot out of the center of the centerpiece that is totally doable it's a couple thousand dollars I think it was like twenty five hundred dollars and we had to pay the fire marshal to come but um, people were like oh my gosh they were not expecting that um, super cool detail one of my favorites would love to do it again I've actually only done it that one time um, but pyrotechnics obviously are always fun for people people love seeing things blow up and there's um, a guy here locally that has come up with sparkler towers that can actually be used inside which is kind of cool and so you can use them for you know first dance or when the bride and groom are announced or when the wedding's over and it's the last song and you're going to the after party I mean so many different ways you can use them not crazy expensive make a cool impact a lot of people haven't seen it so that is that was definitely um, one of my favorites um, a couple more um, we every once in a while get um, you know a Venezuelan couple and I know our Florida girls tend to do a decent amount of these types of weddings as well but um, they love bringing in um, Ora Loca dancers so we did a wedding a couple years ago in Vail and um, have brought the dancers in and it is so much fun we've done Greek dancers we've done hip-hop dancers we've done um, like those mob things I can't think of what you call them those dance mob things we've done a drumming thing like on a bunch of like paint cans and stuff I mean there are so many talented people out there there's actually a guy like in the south that lines up glasses of all different sizes with different liquids in them and can literally play like music it's so cool um, but bringing in you know dancers we just did a wedding in November in LA they brought in Greek dancers because of big Greek family any kind of entertainment like that I think is fun especially during dinner um, so that is definitely you know something fun that we did and one of our favorites and that we would continue doing because there's so many options out there when it comes to that um, okay band backdrops we love band backdrops so our clients usually drop a lot of money on bands and most of the time we're flying them in from somewhere else and if you're doing that I feel like it's so important to highlight the band um, you know you're spending a lot of money on them people are literally going to be looking at them for three four or five hours so to have a beautiful band backdrop behind them I think is worth the money um, we did a wedding this last fall and we had our decor company also do a really beautiful um, stage front and it we took an element from the bride's wedding invitation printed it onto foam core which is so cheap no one even knew that it was foam core and we lined the entire stage with it and it literally looked like her entire stage was like lined in this floral pattern and then there was this beautiful band backdrop that's one of my when I was talking earlier about the decor installations and kind of decor focuses that's definitely one of my things is if you have a band um, making you know them a focus the stage front the backdrop I think that is so cool and there's so many options we did a wedding where the bride had a band and then she had this like really cool DJ come on for the after party and so we started out with one band backdrop and I think it was like a velvety curtainy type things you can't get too complicated if you do this um, but they played in front of that and then when we switched over to the after party and we like switched up the lighting started passing out all this cool food and you know all these crazy things the band backdrop dropped to the ground and then it displayed like the sequin backdrop there are companies that can do that it's called a kabuki drop there's like so many cool things you, you can do with that but it was amazing and people were like oh my gosh that's so crazy and the way that we got the guests to notice it is the couple actually did a second first dance 
it was later on in the night. We played like a song. They got back on the dance floor, just the two of them, did a dance. It was a little faster, a little more fun. She had changed into a different outfit. Everybody was like, oh my gosh, they're doing like another dance. So they were looking that direction and then boom, it dropped and then there was a new band back drop. So it was super cool. Um, and then my last two things, um, just, you know, in talking about like allotting money to creative ideas, cause we could literally talk about this all day. There's so many cool ideas out there, um, would be custom dance floors and custom bars. Again, like I said earlier, if you really think about where your guests are spending the most time, um, it's usually at the bar, on the dance floor. So those should be areas that you focus your money on, um, not, you know, the floral arrangement in the bathroom. I really don't feel like people notice that type of thing. Although I do think like the little baskets with all the stuff like when you go to New York and you go in the bathroom and they have all the hairspray and you know whatever um I think that stuff's fun but I really think when you're thinking about allocating your do dollars and we're talking about the top 10 custom bars and dance floors you know from a creative standpoint there's so many cool things you can do there's round dance floors there's we did a really cool agate dance floor a couple years ago where literally the entire dance floor was a graphic which people loved. There's dance floors that rotate. So literally it like rotates really, really slow round and round. I know that sounds like probably nauseating, but it's really slow. And the guests all of a sudden is like, whoa, like where, you know, I was over there and now I'm over here. So there's some really cool things you can do with that too. So just to recap, and I will put this video up on YouTube so that anyone who missed it or came in halfway or three quarters in can watch the whole thing. Just give you a little recap of my top 10 um, areas to spend your wedding budget. Wedding planner, fashion, photographer, videographer, decor installations, wedding cake, your alcohol on your bar, like doing your premium alcohol in your bar, your tabletop and rentals, your within your chairs and linens and that, your creative ideas, and then my last one is music. It is so important. It can literally make or break your whole party. So we understand that clients don't necessarily always have the money to get a really good band. So what I tell them is then you need to have the best DJ that we can possibly get, um, which, you know, can range, could be the same price as a small band. I mean, for my really good DJs, my clients are paying like 3,500 to 5,500 for a really good solid DJ. Um, bands, you know, I've talked about this before, really great bands are gonna be anywhere between uh, 10,000 and, you know, 55,000. I mean, they go up into the six figures. Um, but just as a range and I talked about that on my first Instagram when I talked about budget So if you want to go back and hear about allocating money to each of those areas, you can watch that But music is so important. I've seen it ruin a party. I literally had a client hire a band I'd never heard of before they said they saw them in a bar, which I was like, oh god like this is not gonna be good um, but they're like no, they're so amazing and it's like yeah in a bar setting, but this is a wedding we hired them, I was skeptical, and they were so bad that literally an hour and a half into the wedding, the client was like, tell the band to stop, tell them to get off, let's have the DJ start. So thank God we had a really great DJ backup, but music is so, so important. It literally can make or break your party. So whether you get a DJ or a band, get the very best DJ that you can and a really good band is so important. And nobody wants to hear a band play like originals, like cover music. You need cover music band, whether, no matter what genre it is. Um, and, what, and, and on the music thing, um, definitely make sure that your band, like how many members are in your band, reflect the number of people in your wedding. Like don't have a 25 person band for a hundred people. Like they will literally blow these people's ears off. So think about that too. Like in relation to your guest count, that's how big your band should be. 
and a good planner will help you navigate that. Okay, so I only have like seven minutes left, maybe six. Um, it looks like a few questions came in, so I'm gonna answer them. And then again, thank you so much for joining me. I will post this up with all the other videos I've done on my YouTube channel. If there's anything you would love to hear me talk about, please let me know. I'll be back next Wednesday, again, five o'clock mountain time. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna talk about yet because I have so many things to talk about. So I haven't chosen, so stay tuned for that. But I just wanna answer a couple of questions that came through before we end. So here's a, here's a couple for you. Mm -hmm. um, where do brides and grooms typically waste the most money? Mm. Mm hmm that's a good one. So I feel like you guys, or just clients in general are wasting money on a lot of the Etsy stuff. I love Etsy for like certain things, but I have clients spend so much money on things that I literally dump in the garbage. So here are the things where clients are wasting money and you should not do it. Ceremony programs, no. The only time I maybe am an okay on ceremony programs is if it's a Jewish wedding or a Catholic wedding and the people are there and they don't know what the heck's going on so you need to kind of outline like you know why you're circling around each other and breaking glasses and you know all the stuff that goes on in a Catholic ceremony and if you're not Catholic you don't know what to say or what to repeat so that I do like um, because I feel like it kind of walks the person through like hey here's what to expect here's what's going on here's what it means other than that I throw away so many ceremony programs and it's such a waste so I say do not do them another area the koozies I mean I'm from Florida y'all like I have had lots of koozies in my life but the koozies are just a no I they're cute like I totally agree like have them at your rehearsal dinner or welcome party or something but you have no idea how many koozies I throw away and I feel horrible I usually try to send them back to the client and then I'm like oh my god what are they gonna do with 300 koozies like that's what everybody's getting for Christmas um, but the koozies the cocktail napkins which I'm good with the cocktail napkins it's just like we don't need 3,000 maybe like three per person like one or two for hors d'oeuvres and one per drink once your guest has gotten one with their drink like they're good they saw it it's cute great and let's move on so the koozies the cocktail napkins the matches you know all those little tchotchke things mm -mm. and i am like not on the bandwagon of the welcome bags anymore i might get on the bandwagon again but I am talking my clients into doing more thoughtful, amazing gifts because I literally spend on average 25 to $55 per welcome bag and it's like chips and water and Advil and all this stuff and half the time people are throwing it away, you know, half the time the welcome bag doesn't even make it to the person. It's just, and so I'd rather take $25 and spend it on custom chocolates from Comparte out of LA and your client or your guest opens the box and it spells your last name. For instance, I have a client that's doing K-U-H-N and the fifth chocolate is their wedding date and it's like super gourmet and it's 20 bucks a box less than a welcome bag and way more thoughtful so much more cool people have never seen it before so those are the things I feel like people are wasting money on thank you yeah um, okay name three areas where a couple can stretch their budget where they can make their money go further but still maintain that high-end feeling Ooh. Hmm, that's a good one. Um, making your money go further. So I think I would say um, doing really cool hors d'oeuvres. So let's say you don't have a lot of money to spend on just food in general. The first impression of your guests is going to be at cocktail hour. So like splurge on the hors d'oeuvres, splurge on food stations and displays and really cool things like that. And then as you move into kind of maybe some less impressive stuff, if that is you know what happens in your specific case, 
um, then I feel like, you know, they, that was the first impression. They were wild by the hors d'oeuvres. Everybody loves cocktail hour. And so that would be a place that you could like maybe stretch your dollar. Um, I also feel like when it comes to music, people don't know this, but when you hire live music for a ceremony, you definitely can negotiate with them for way less money to continue to play through multiple events. So let's say a string quartet is $1,500 for a ceremony and you're like, I really would love to have the string quartet um, at the cocktail hour too. You don't pay them another $1,500. It's literally like a couple hundred more dollars to get them to stay for another hour. Um, and then I would say, if you're having a hard time with the bar piece, I've seen clients stretch by minimizing and doing like really nice wine, a couple of beers and two signature drinks and really being thoughtful about the signature drinks. So thinking, okay, what is most popular with people? It's usually a vodka based drink and then either a tequila or whiskey based drink. And then you kind of make everyone happy without having to like do a full open bar. I'm also a huge proponent on the bar note of doing bars on consumption versus bar packages, but I could talk for an hour about why, and so I'll talk about that at another time because we're running out of time. Okay, last question. Name one destination that would be your ideal location to plan an over-the-top over wedding. Mm. Well, I have two actually right now. So on our website for years, my dream location, and I am gonna make this happen someday because I get really close and then they pick somewhere else, would be the Biltmore in Asheville, North Carolina, like on that huge long lawn in front of that mansion, clear tent. I mean, it would just be amazing. So I will do that because I've literally like, been willing that since I got into this business. We have on our website little like tidbits about us and that's one of the things I've said. And then my second over the top would be um, probably the Fairmont, either Lake Louise or Banff. It's just so stunningly gorgeous. I really want to do a wedding there. Um, and so those would be my two top locations. Anyone who knows me knows I'm not a huge international travel person for many reasons. Sorry, but um, Canada is about as adventurous as I'm going to get. Um, and of course I work in Cabo a ton, but I don't even look at that. Like I love it there. So I don't look at it like, you know, I just don't want to go somewhere really far and plan anything. I just think it sounds like a nightmare, although I would do it. But um, those would be my two, um, areas. I just love working in the U.S. I love working in other places, but I do love. We have so many amazing spots in the U.S. that I haven't worked at, and I could talk a whole hour on all the places I want to work, but thank you so much, guys, for joining me. I will put this up on YouTube. I'll see you next week, and hope you guys have an amazing Wednesday.